A diver is playing with a special looking creature in the blue sea. What kind of creature is this? How did the diver play with this cute little creature? There is also an invaluable friendship between humans and sharks. An Australian man named Anderson, who loves to dive, accidentally met a shark in the ocean and the friendship has lasted for seven years now, which is quite incredible. Anderson himself hopes to use the story of his encounter with the shark to break the stereotype of sharks as vicious and cannibalistic. To improve the situation of sharks today, and to call on people to stop hurting sharks so as to protect them. Anderson, who loves the ocean and its creatures, has been a professional diving instructor for 27 years and runs a diving school near Nobis Beach, where he teaches diving skills to tourists. Point one day, seven years ago, Anderson was swimming happily in his favorite sea as usual. Then he noticed an unknown creature swimming in front of him, but its posture was weird, twisted into a strange posture. Driven by curiosity, Anderson waved his flippers and swam forward to find out what was going on. Anderson could not help but think a little happily that he might have discovered a new species in the ocean. So he swam forward more vigorously. And soon he caught up with the strange unknown creature. Anderson went up to take a look, the unknown creature, in fact was not his imagination of new marine species, but an only 15 centimeters of Australian female tiger shark baby. Anderson saw the baby tiger shark in front of him, he really couldn't help but want to go up and get close to it, because this time the baby tiger shark was too cute, just like a lovable toy doll. The baby tiger shark instinctively wanted to swim away after seeing a human get close, but at this point Anderson saw the strange thing about the baby tiger shark, a large fish hook embedded deep in its tiny fin. Anderson knew that if the hook was not taken down, the baby tiger shark would be in big trouble and it would be a problem if it survived. So Anderson ignored the baby tiger shark's resistance, put the baby tiger shark in his arms and helped it take off the fish hook. And then hurriedly released the baby tiger shark to let it go. He did not expect the baby tiger shark did not swim away at once, but swam around him several times, as if to say thank you for Anderson's kindness. Anderson was amused by the baby tiger shark's naive appearance. And could not help but reach out his hands to try to get close to it. The baby tiger shark did not dodge, but very intimately let Anderson touch itself, and after a long time, the baby tiger shark was even more bold, and even let Anderson hold it in his arms. This kind of super close interaction made Anderson quite happy. This is a real shark, and also a shark would be pampered to him. As you can imagine, as a lover of marine animals, Anderson's mood at the moment was so excited. If he was not wearing the oxygen mask. Anderson was estimated to cheer up. As soon as Anderson went diving, he would visit the baby tiger shark, and the baby tiger shark would come on time to interact with Anderson and hug him, and it never missed the appointment. And even when it needed to move later. This cute tiger shark would come back to him in the warmer months of the year. Every time it saw Anderson, the tiger shark would immediately open its mouth wide and swim over joyfully, pampered Anderson as usual. In fact, Anderson never fed the tiger shark. And did not give the name of the tiger shark. He just gently approached the tiger shark each time and got close to it, but they have become each other's most special friends. Humans and sharks had established such an inseparable relationship. And their friendship has lasted seven years so far. Such a friendship is really enviable, although the sharks are very ferocious animals in the eyes of everyone, from the above story we can also see that they actually have a soft side, provided they feel the human friendly. It so happens that one of the female divers also has an extraordinary relationship with sharks. The picture of the female diver in the water, dancing, surrounded by many sharks, constituting a pair of both frightening but a very warm scene when you look carefully. Before this heartwarming scene, the female diver was taking out the hook from the mouth of the huge shark. Looking at the shark's huge white teeth, I can really sweat for the female diver. Especially worried that the shark would suddenly do not cooperate or she would hurt the shark, then the shark would bite the female diver's arm. 
But obviously such worries were superfluous, the shark opened its mouth. Looked especially obedient to let the female diver take the fish hook from its mouth. After taking, perhaps the shark felt particularly comfortable, it even swimming happily around the female diver, maybe it was expressing the gratitude to the female diver. This picture is very warm and friendly. Perhaps the sharks have their own unique way of transmitting information to each other, and soon there are more sharks who come here and want the female diver to take out the fish hooks from their mouths as well. The female diver is really busy, but she still takes the hooks out of the shark's mouths one by one. She also makes a point of showing people that big box of dense fish hooks. At this time, many sharks are swimming around the female diver happily. And the female diver is also constantly stroking their heads, like stroking her own children, happily and friendly, the reason for such a harmonious scene should go back to an idea Christina had more than 20 years ago. Christina was very fond of diving. And since she started college she had often gone diving with her friends. On this day, they came to a slightly deeper part of the ocean. For them it was a challenge because they were very likely to encounter fierce sea animals. So after getting into the water, they all watched their surroundings carefully. Everything went well, there was nothing unexpected happened. But in order to prevent any accidents, they still hurried to shore. And the fate also came at this moment. Just when Christina was about to approach the water surface. She somehow looked back, and this glance almost changed her life. In the endless turquoise blue, deep water, a shark in which gracefully, floating. It kept writhing, as if to express its pain. Christina stared at the shark. Suddenly she saw the shark's mouth seemed to have fish hooks appearing, she was afraid that the hook brought the pain to the shark. She looked up at the short distance between herself and the surface of the water, after a few seconds of hesitation. She resolutely swam in the direction of the shark. The friends did not see her come up for a long time, and they went down to sea, they were stunned at once. They tried desperately to obstruct, but Christina did not turn back. But the next magical scene happened. The shark did not hurt Christina, it seemed to sense Christina's kindness, just stayed still. Observing that the shark had no intention of hurting herself, Christina slowly went forward and touched the shark. After a little familiarity, she put her hand into the shark's mouth. And then pulled out the hook in its mouth, the shark relaxed a lot at once, lightly swam around her, and the fate between them thus arose. The opening scene has been going on for years. The relationship between animals and humans is often so subtle, you love me more. I would also love you more. Enthusiastic people often rescue injured animals, and give them some water or food, but this old man is different from the others. He feeds 4,000 parrots a day. How could this old man feed so many parrots? What kind of story happened to him? The story started from 25 years ago. 25 years ago, no one notices a camera repair shop on a street corner in Chennai, India. This man named Sherko was then moved to Chennai, a port city in southeastern India. Before moving to Chennai, Sherko who lives alone, has formed a habit in the morning, silently keeps some food for the animals on the roof of the house. This inadvertent little act often attracts a few greedy little sparrows. Time flows so slowly, he repairs old cameras for customers in the store day in and day out, and the story of him and the parrot is like a chance encounter. Just at this chance encounter note, a major event that shook the world, that's the Indian Ocean Tsunami, years after the Indian Ocean Tsunami when Shurka talks about the disaster again, he is still terrified. The scope of the Indian Ocean disaster 10 years ago is mainly located at the junction of the Indian Ocean Plate and the Eurasian Plate. The magnitude was as high as 9.3 on the Richter scale. It was also the second largest earthquake since 1900 triggered a tsunami as high as 10 meters. It caused huge casualties and property damage. Statistics as of January the 20th, 2005 show that Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami killed 226,000 people. This may be the world's deadliest tsunami disaster, 
in more than 200 years after the tsunami in India. Shirka, a 52-year-old man, at the time, saw two injured parrots on his balcony so he took them for simple processing and fed them with food. Let them go back to nature when they're done. But he never thought of it at the time. These two parrots who came to eat by chance will make such a big change in his life. After that, the two parrots come back every day to visit Shirka. The hospitable Shirka will always serve them with food. As a result, there are more and more parrots time passes day by day. The parrots on the roof of Shirka's house are from 2 to 10, then 100, 200. Soon the roof of Shirka's house was filled with parrots. For 10 years, there are nearly 4,000 parrots on his balcony. When countless parrots landed on Shirka's roof, this is the most beautiful scenery in Chennai city. However, it is not easy to keep this beauty. Since then, to feed 4,000 parrots, Shirka also built row after row of racks on the roof just for them. Not only that, every day at 4.30 in the morning, he started to cook rice. He's just like a super dad, gets up and prepares food for his bird. He arranges the prepared food on the shelf bit by bit. Although there is no one was waiting for him to eat, but there are birds who are waiting for him. Nearly 4,000 parakeets, to be exact. Because of these cute little guys, Shirkar is also called Birdman by the locals. The parrots come to eat twice a day. The food consumption, in one day alone amounts to 60 kilograms. This means that Shirka costs at least 500 rupees a day. That's no a small sum of money for Shirka. The cost of this part is 40% of his monthly income. However, the satisfaction of being a birdman cannot be measured by money. Shirka joked. He looks like he's tethered by birds. Shirka just takes care of these parrots which he do not know where them come from and where will they go. Accidentally, he persisted for 10 years. In this long 10 years, these birds and Shirka form a sweet bond that never leaves. Nature is a rich gene pool. To protect all kinds of animals is to protect all kinds of our own genes. This helps human beings to understand nature and themselves from a deeper level. It is impossible for creatures on Earth to survive alone. Under certain environmental conditions, we are connected and living together. All living things in nature are interdependent, mutually restrictive. The extinction of every species indicates that many species are about to die. Only to protect the biological chain can better maintain the ecological chain. was riding on a boat, and in front of him was a crocodile that was more than four meters long. Unexpectedly, instead of hacking the man, the crocodile docilely accepted the food the man fed. What exactly was going on? What happened between this man and the crocodile? Crocodiles are often ferocious predators lurking underwater. But for Anbo, the crocodile was his family. Their story happened 23 years ago. 23 years ago, Anbo was an ordinary fisherman living in Indonesia. On one of the trips home from fishing, he met Lazika. He later recalled that, when he first met Lazika, it was less than a meter long. Crocodiles often appeared in Indonesian waters, so Anbo didn't care about the crocodile at the time. Unexpectedly, the crocodile followed him all the way and came to his door. Anbo named it Lazika, and this was their first encounter. Lazika was in a bad state at the time. It was very hungry. It was significantly smaller than the other crocodiles and had bruises on its body, so Anbo guessed it might be hungry, and wanted human help. Anbo fed Lizika some fish he caught and patiently helped it heal. After a period of treatment, Lizika recovered, and its spirit was significantly better. Originally, Anbo thought he would never meet the crocodile again, but what he didn't expect was that from this day, Lizika settled down in the waters near his home. They became very close. Whenever Anbo called Lizika, it would slowly swim over and wait for him to feed it. When it was full, it would leave. But Anbo didn't feed Lizika every day because he needed to work. One time when Anbo left, Lizika came as usual. Anbo's wife had to find neighbors to help take care of Lizika. The neighbors were very scared at first, 
After all, it was a ferocious salt water crocodile, but Lysica's behavior was beyond everyone's expectations. It did not attack them. Anber was stunned to hear this when he came back. After that, whenever Anber went fishing, the neighbors would come to feed Lysica spontaneously. After many years, Anbo got old and he couldn't continue his high-intensity work like fishing. When he retired, he could take care of Lizika wholeheartedly. Since then, Lizika has become a complete member of the Anbo family. They would not only feed it, but even bathe it and brush its teeth. Lizika enjoyed that happy life. Compared to now, Lizika was wild and difficult to tame when it was a child. While it didn't hurt anyone, it was territorial and threatened anyone who might invade its territory, but after being fed by Anbo and the pull around it, Lizika was already quite docile, and liked interacting with humans very much, very friendly. When people from other villages heard that Anbo raised a crocodile in his house, they would come to watch with great curiosity. Later, someone was willing to pay a high price to feed Lizika. Crocodiles were very sacred animals in local traditions. However, this request was severely rejected by Anbo many times, because in his eyes Lizika was not an ordinary crocodile, but a family member who had lived with him for 23 years. The relationship between animals and people has always been something people like to talk about. Through these stories today, we can easily find that the relationship between humans and animals is not only pure, but also extremely sincere. All things have feelings. As the guardians of the earth, we humans should have the responsibility to love, cherish and care for all living things. We should embrace and be kind to them, accept- In the forest everything seems so quiet, flowers and trees look extraordinarily leisurely, the white clouds and blue sky in the sky also set off each other's beauty. An owl flying alone in the sky, finally it flew to a familiar corner, there's someone there waiting quietly for it. Life is busy, keeping a kind heart is what keeps us warm to each other, looking at the green mountains and green waters, feeling the purification of the years, maybe this is our first hope, Indiana the United States a 98-year-old grandmother, although she is old. But she still looks forward to life, grandma always uphold the spirit of optimism and walk on the mountain path daily, taking a walk can make grandma feel good, can see different things, even these flowers and trees can be seen every day, but grandma still enjoys it, one day. When grandma goes out again, she encountered a wounded owl in the mountains, owl's condition is serious, although the owl is covered with feathers, but there are still obvious wounds and black-red symptoms, the grandma was grew up in the mountains. Probably have a certain understanding of the habits of various animals, seeing owl like this, grandma decides it needs immediate medical attention, owls are birds, but it's more aggressive, when grandma rescued it, it took a lot of effort, after successfully bringing the owl home. Grandma quickly cleaned it up and applied medicine on the wound site, the owl was initially very resistant to grandma's actions, but unfortunately the body has been injured, it don't have the strength to struggle until it saw the grandma heal it. Then owl was gradually becoming more obedient, when grandma comes to it again, it won't toss hard anymore, so the owl stayed at grandma's house, that's it, under the care of grandma, the owl's body quickly recovered completely, because owls belong to nature. So grandma didn't mean to let it stay by her side dot and send it back to nature, the freed owl, after flying out of the cage, it spins in the air a few times before slowly flying away, looking up at the owl flying steadily in the sky, the grandma smiling, she thought everything. All over on the day the owl leaves, but what grandma didn't expect was, this is just the beginning, the owl remembers her grandmother's kindness in her heart, after physical recovery, it didn't fly too far, even the flight route mainly takes grandma's house as the center point. Then every day it fly back on time to visit my grandmother, that's something my grandma didn't expect, she just wanted to help the owl, but she didn't expect the other party to be a grateful guy, no matter how far it flies, it will fly back to visit grandma. 
Even if only from a distance, but never stop, Grandma is always at home alone and the owls come back every day to visit, it has also become one of the things that Grandma looks forward to the most, although she is old but her body is tough when she have nothing to do. I will go for a walk on the road, not only does this save time but also check to see if the owl is coming to see you again, day after day like this, they became each other's ties in each other's hearts if you say back to the pastoral, is just stay in a small yard. Pass the time slowly, not miss the hustle and bustle of the city, give your soul a resting place, then the beauty of the small village can also be one of the most beautiful brushes the owl gives grandma hope for life and the next story we mentioned, it is equally heartwarming. This owl looks very domineering, but during the flight, it's shaking slightly, don't worry too much, because at this time the owl is in another position, that is to send a letter to a former benefactor, its legs have the shape of a bracelet. While the woman put the letter on the owl ring, this makes it easy to pass information to another place owls are like most animals, there is also a very cute scene it's just a dull color plus its smart eyes when ordinary people get close to it will be amazed by its aura however. Such a cold owl it travels to and from the place designated with the woman every day then after sending the letter go back immediately no matter rain or shine can't stop the owl's footsteps the story happened years ago the owl didn't know the woman at the time on a high flying flight the owl was attacked by hunter its wings are wounded after struggling again and again the owl falls from the sky the woman just happened to pass by where the owl fell after seeing the tragic owl the woman is very distressed and take it back to the place where she live and find a nearby animal doctor to treat wounds the woman is very obsessed with this owl in addition to paying attention to how much the owl eats every day will also pay attention to its mood swings maybe a woman understands that owls are very unhappy when they are kept in the house all day so she took it to an empty place nearby it's just that there is no way for a woman to release the cat head knife because at that time its wings had not fully recovered Every time the woman comes out with an owl, she will tell the owl about things around her, including every grass and every tree there, the woman tell everything in detail after the owl wing's recovery, the woman put it back in nature, although there is a lot of remorse. But women have to do it, because she's going to work somewhere else soon, just like that, after the owl flew out of the cage, gradually disappearing from the woman's sight, and the woman was about to embark on the road to travel far away. After the woman arrives in new work environment, found out that local communication is not very good if she wants to catch up with her family, need to be delivered by letter, this is how women write and send letters every day the life is okay but suddenly one day. Woman finds an owl hovering in the sky and it has been in the sky and refuses to leave until the owl flies to the ground and fall behind a woman she realized that it was the little cutie she had rescued just in time for the woman to go home and the owl follows. It lingers in the air until the door the woman saw the meaning of the owl after a waving the owl flew down and landed firmly on the shoulders of women this is the tacit understanding when they get along just like that every time a woman writes a letter to her family. She will let the owl pass it on, it's a very competent male carrier, every time, it will complete the task given to it by a woman very seriously, the woman grates the owl because she brought her thoughts to her family, and for the owl, the woman is its benefactor. In return for the woman's life-saving grace owl is willing to fulfill lynx lying on the ground, the lynx did not escape after seeing the man approaching. What happened to this lynx? What happened between it and the man in the end? Lynx like to live in the cold zone, their size is not big. Adult lynx's body length is only about 1 meter, it is like a wild big cat, and very much like a wolf, so the lynx also be called small tiger. It also known as wolf cat. Although their appearance looks furry and cute. In fact the lynx is a relatively fierce medium-sized animals, in the wild when encountering it, you should also be careful that a few years ago, Chris Ward passed by a clearing during a trip, he found a lynx lying in the clearing. He was surprised that the lynx did not immediately flee when it saw humans approaching. 
so he was accompanied by his companion to go up to check the situation. The result was just as Chris Ward had expected, the lynx was caught in a trap with one foot. It was trapped in place and could not move. The poor lynx could only stay where it was and listen to God's arrangement. The lucky lynx met the kind Chris Ward. Chris Ward wanted to rescue the lynx that had entered the trap by mistake. But he was afraid that if he rushed to help directly, he would be attacked by the lynx. He brought a set of magic tool, prepared to use it to set the lynx, in order to prevent the lynx from hurting them in the process of their rescue because of fear. But the lynx seemed to be very alert, it kept making sounds to warn Chris Ward when it saw him get close. But Chris Ward ignored the lynx's warning, he calmly went up and negotiated with the lynx. Chris Ward explained to the lynx, and said he just want to save it from the trap. Not to hurt it, and definitely he would not hurt it. Of course this was also Chris Ward's strategy, what he said was to appease the lynx, let the lynx off guard and thus successfully trapping the lynx. Just when the lynx was a little dazed and skeptical by Chris Ward's eloquent recitation, Chris Ward decided to take action and put the magic tool on the neck of the lynx. With the continuous contraction of the iron ring on the magic tool, the lynx began to struggle up. But the injured lynx was obviously a bit stretched out, and soon failed, lying motionless on the ground, the lynx seemed to know that it was not the opponent of the human in front of it, so it simply lay flat on the ground and pretended to be a well-behaved cat showing its belly to Chris Ward. But its wagging tail betrayed it. The feline's wagging tail was actually a manifestation of anger. So Chris Ward got a friend to help him fix the lynx to prevent the lynx from moving around and hurting himself when he unclipped the trap. After handing over the headset to a friend, Chris Ward carefully, creeping closer to the lynx, trying to unlock the trap with his bare hands. But the lynx still misunderstood him, it came directly to a series of rolls, it was struggling more powerful than before. The friend almost failed to suppress the lynx alone. Chris Ward and his friend were scared by the fierce lynx, but they did not give up to rescue it. The friend with greater force than before to suppress the lynx this time, clutching the magic tool. So that no matter how the lynx struggle, it could not escape from Chris Ward's palm, the lynx was physically exhausted and soon calmed down, the man took the opportunity to unclip the trap that holds the lynx's paws and loosen the magic tool. He was very smooth with this set of movements and the lynx looked confused. Chris Ward and his friend packed up the rescue tools and were ready to leave. However, this silly lynx seemed to have not recognized the fact that it had been rescued for a while, but also thought it was trapped in the trap. Chris Ward simply to be amused by this silly lynx, so he threw the magic tool towards the lynx to remind it to leave. He did not expect the lynx did not leave, but to stay in place to gaze deeply at him. It seemed to be in its own way to express its gratitude to Chris Ward. The lynx kept watching Chris Ward and his friend leave, then turning around and hiding in the mountains. Many years later, Chris Ward was awakened by a noise in a beautiful morning. He was a little angry to get up from bed, wanted to see which unqualified person woke him up early in the morning. As a result, the moment he opened the door, Chris Ward could not believe his eyes and could not control the alarm, oh, my god. My goodness. Where are all these little wild cats from? But he took a closer look, these meowing little wild cat help but be a little touched. After so long. The little lynx even remembered him. Chris Ward rushed back home to prepare milk, meat and somebody's. Forest area fragmentation and shrinkage, the gradual increase in and is protected by the state. When you meet a lynx in the wild, you should contact the relevant authorities so that it can be better protected. And this lynx and Chris Ward's deep friendship is enough to prove to people that animals also the living creatures which have flesh, blood and feelings. They will also express their gratitude to their rescuers, and they also know how to return the favor. So we should protect the ecological environment and protect these wild animals. Only in this way can we and the animals have a better future. And was tied up and it was heartbreaking to watch. It turned out that three years ago, one day it broke into a trap laid by poachers and was seen by rescuers, and it finally survived. The lion was trapped by the wire and now it even had trouble in eating. 
Three years later the lion was already in danger, but luckily it was found in time by the top national medical staff. The lion we could see now, its neck had been wrapped in wire for three years. British Daily Mail reported that British photographer Gary Roberts photographed a lion with a wire collar strangled into the neck which was made by poacher in Tanzania Mikumi National Park, the male lion's eyes were full of desperate, the people who saw it were very sad. People reported this to the park, which was also shocked. According to the park, this was actually a very long and sad story, which happened three years ago, and they didn't expect to see it three years later. It was understood that the injured male lion was first found three years ago. At that time, it was a lion cub, wandering in the park for food, accidentally fell into a poacher's wire trap and was trapped in the neck. Fortunately, the trap was used to hunt small animals such as antelope, the lion struggled to escape, but the wire collar was left on its neck. When people tried to help remove the wire collar, the lion was afraid and hid in the jungle, never to be seen again. A search and rescue team was formed with the police and veterinarians, but Mikumi, Tanzania, which had 3,230 square kilometers, it was surrounded by mountains to the east, south and west, and a 5,000 square kilometer sealess wildlife reserve to the north. Where the lions migrated freely between the two areas. Because the search was so extensive, they were unable to find the lion, and everyone thought it would not survive. But miracles always happened, and to their surprise, the lion was found three years later. The man who found the lion at first was an uncle. The uncle found the lion in a jungle adventure inadvertently, the wire barbed on the lion's neck had not fallen off, the lion's expression had no enthusiasm for life. If the lion's neck had been so trapped. Later the bacteria on top of the wire mesh would seep into the bottom layer of its skin, the consequences were unthinkable. Fortunately, the uncle just passed by this place and found the trapped lion, he was ready to rescue the poor guy in front of him. At this time the lion was lying under the tree, with its eyes fixed on the uncle. For the human in front of it, the lion did not know anything about him. It was afraid that its own safety was threatened, so its body instinctively moved backward slowly. But it did not know that this human was to save it. In order to rescue the lion, the uncle also did enough to prepare. Originally he came here to explore, naturally he had prepared a lot of tools, but looking at such a fierce lion, the uncle did not dare to act rashly. After all, the lion's limbs were thick, the bite force of its teeth was quite impressive, if bitten or caught by its claws, it was easy to be injured if he was not careful. So the uncle did not act for a long time, he had been watching the lion's movement. At this time the lion opened its mouth and roared to the uncle, it wanted to use this method to force him back. But it found that its roar did not scare the uncle, but he reluctantly took the tools to help it. When the lion saw someone coming this way, it became very alert and immediately stood up and tried to retreat. The uncle saw the lion seem to go deeper into the forest, he felt in his heart that if he missed this opportunity, it would be very difficult to meet it again in the future. The lion was in such a dangerous situation now, he could not bear to see the lion being closer and closer to death. So at that time he immediately took out his cell phone and called the rescue center during the phone call. The uncle accurately reported his location and the situation he encountered, there was now a lion in urgent need of rescue. After 10 minutes, the rescue team found the lion. The male lion was already very weak. And the rescue team sent the injured male lion to the hospital after anesthesia. Due to the growing size of the lion, the wire collar had been almost invisible. Veterinarians used special instruments to take down the death collar and then apply anti-inflammatory solutions to the infected wounds. It had difficulty in eating and became weaker and weaker, it was unable to hunt for food on a daily basis. Relying on food from its siblings for three years to survive. On the first day the lion was wrapped in wire around its neck, its family members tried to help it, but the wire was so tight that the lions could not help. Since there was no way to remove the wire, it was time to help the lion find food. 
Due to the wire ring stuck on the neck, it was very difficult for the lion to lower its head to eat. As we all know, the lion was a species that was particularly prone to hunger, and each time the amount of food was very large. If it stopped eating food, it was completely unable to support the huge physical exertion. If there was no lion group to help this lion finish feeding, it was estimated that the poor guy had now left this wonderful world using humans as an example. If a friend applies a treat at us once, or helps us buy the food for once, it may be very easy, but accomplishing such a thing day after day for three years, it is not an easy task, it requires great willpower. From this gesture we could see how much the pride had helped this lion. It turned out that not only did humans have such deep feelings for each other, but even the animals also helped each other. The lions looked fierce, we were confused by the surface of it about many things. We had many stories of lions saving humans in our lives, how could this show that lions were not warm enough? They were just surviving in their own biological chain, just like we had to eat pork and beef, it was the same. The lions did not abandon this lion. But always protected it and took care of it, or this male lion had long been dead. Although the lion's neck looked heartbreaking, at the same time we also saw its strength, its faithful family members would not abandon it. Without the help of the lions. This lion could not continue to live normally, its neck wire on its body's impact, sooner or later would reach the limit, the lion's body could not withstand such a large destruction, it was bound to collapse. So the uncle who helped the lion. And the rescue angel team also made a considerable contribution to the matter. It was because of everyone's efforts together that the injured lion thrived, after more than three months of treatment following the rescue surgery. The male lion's wounds had scabbed over and the mane on its neck and shoulders was slowly growing out. It had returned to the pride, started hunting for its own food, and was gradually becoming a normal male lion. It seemed to be in good spirits and recovering well. But recently poachers had re-entered the Mikumi Reserve in Tanzania and the park authorities had started anti-poaching patrols. But such a vast area was a bit overwhelming for the police to handle. The authorities had launched the Sana project to achieve harmony with the natural world by encouraging help for the poor people in the reserve. It was hoped that such a project would help people to protect the wildlife here. To animals, humans may be fearsome predators. But in many cases, animals also need humans' help, and humans will show their kindness. In turn, many times humans are helped and rewarded by animals. The bond between humans and animals does exist, and this trust, which does not need to be conveyed by words. Beautiful swan is walking behind a man. No matter where the man goes, the swans follow closely behind him. What happened between them and why are they so close? Well. The female swan's name is Garup. This man is a post office worker who has retired for a long time. But more than 30 years ago, when the man hadn't retired. One small thing changed his life. That day. As usual, the man is playing with his friend by the river. They plan to cross the river together in a boat. But on the way across the river, a creature struggling on the water caught their attention. The two rowed the boat to the side of the creature which turned out to be a swan. At this time, the swan was entangled in the fishing net discarded by humans and there was no way to break free and take off. It can't swim well. It can only keep struggling on the water to keep its balance. Save the remaining energy. After seeing this scene, the kind man and his friend decided to save this beautiful swan. The man untied the fishing net tightly wrapped around the swan. He rescued this weary swan. Originally, the man planned to release the swan back to nature. Because letting wild animals live in nature is the best thing. But the man soon realized. There was something wrong with the swan. After his observation. He found the swan's wings have bones misaligned because of entanglement in fishing nets. My wings hurt so much, if the man chooses to ignore. Then the swan cannot regain health. It can't fly. It will be food for predators such as foxes. Therefore, 
the man ultimately chose to take the swan home to care for it. He took it to the vet for treatment. Under his loving care and veterinary treatment, Garup is slowly returning to fitness. It stays on the small farm every day and walks with the man in the morning. In this period, Garup never tried to leave the farm. This place is really nice, no matter what the man is doing, it will follow closely behind him. At first, the man just didn't want the swan to be eaten by the fox. But as time goes by, he's already used to Garup's company. This man has no children. The company Garup gave him was precious and real. The swan gets along well with the other animals in the family. The man is over 60 years old. Garup has been with him for more than 30 years. Gallup was always loyal to him. To the man, Garup is his family. These things come in pairs. A similar story happened in Spain. In a monastery pond, Gardner Lauer meets a baby swan. This gardener loves it so much. He spends time with the swan every day and gives it food. As time goes by, the relationship between them grows closer. This swan is growing up. They also play in the lake every day. At this time, their relationship was very close. The swan often stay by the gardener's side. In addition, it doesn't go anywhere. As long as the gardener calls, the swan will go to his side immediately. Are you calling me? The swan snuggled up to him. It looks like the swan is hugging Lauer. But in the end, this beautiful friendship is over. The swan leaves the pond where it grew up. It never came back. But the fond memories it has left us and the gardeners will not fade away. Next, look at this story. In Panjin, Liaoning, an old man died. In order to commemorate the old man, the family set up a mourning hall. But surprisingly, a crane actually flew into the mourning hall. It stayed and bowed in front of the photo of the old man and it did not leave for a long time. What's going on? People love to talk about the bond between animals and people. Through today's stories, we can easily find. The relationship between humans and animals is not only pure, but also extremely sincere. People opened the lid floor of this basement, then they saw a shocking scene, a large black bear's head was exposed. Looking at it, it looked a little tired. People got closer and found that there were three small black bear cubs living inside. Why were there so many bears in the basement? What did these bears want to do? Where did they all come from? And what would happen after this, in Knoxville, Tennessee, a man's house had a gas leak, and because he had to repair the gas line, he contacted a repairman to come and fix it. The man and the repairman worked together to open the basement floor and they found a surprisingly large black bear living under the man's house. It was a hibernating female black bear as well as three tiny black bear cubs. Everyone was stunned to see the scene in front of them, and they couldn't believe their eyes. But these kind people were surprised and promptly called the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, who were the first to contact the rescue workers. The rescuers came to the man's home and looked into the basement and surmised that the bear had caused damage to the gas pipes in order to give itself and its children a warm place to hibernate, which in turn led to a gas leak. But in fact, after the rescuers' observation and understanding, the space where the mother bear and cubs were currently located was not suitable for them to hibernate, especially if there was a gas leak, the mother bear and cubs would be harmed. So in order to be able to carry out repairs smoothly, as well as out of concern for the health of the black bear's family, the rescuers needed the this bear to take its children away and let them find a new place to hibernate. Considering that the mother bear might not be able to find a suitable new hibernation site in a short time, the rescuers decided to build a small cabin for the bear family to hibernate temporarily in the nearby forest. The mother bear was finally overwhelmed by the human harassment and left the man's basement overnight, but carelessly left its three children in the man's basement. Unable to predict when the mother would return, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency decided to temporarily take charge of the cubs, who had not yet opened their eyes. 
rescuers took the three cubs to the University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine for treatment, and after examination the cubs were all female. Fortunately, the mother bear took good care of the three cubs, who were all round and in good health. The staff then took good care of the cubs and waited patiently for the mother bear to return and hand them back to it. In case the mother bear would never return. The staff also set out to find a wild bear that could become the cubs' new family but surprisingly, a few days later, the mother bear reappeared on the man's doorstep, having returned to look for its children. The man looked at the emaciated face of the mother bear and rushed to dial the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to contact rescuers to hurry up and return the three small black bear cubs to the mother bear. The cubs were then returned and reunited with their mother. After being reunited with its children, the mother bear actually came out under the house and gazed deeply at the man, as if to express its gratitude to him for not hurting its children, the mother and cubs were sent to hibernate in a temporary shelter after this. And they adapted quickly and seemed to like the temporary house that the humans had built for them. I have to say, it's a good thing the men found them early, otherwise the bears might have been in danger if they had been hibernating in the basement for a long time. I believe that when spring comes, they would go back to live in the wild again. Animals in trouble would also ask for help from humans, we humans as the animals who have the highest IQ, should help animals through difficult times. Like the following story of the mother deer and the young man, the picture of humans and animals helping each other is too loving, in Cherokee County, USA, a merganser cub was stuck in a fence behind a house and couldn't move. Outside the fence stood an adult female merganser who looked very anxious and who was supposed to be the mother of the merganser cub. The merganser cub, who was stuck inside the fence, was so frightened that it was screaming as if to say, Mom, help me. Come and save me. I'm so scared. The mother merganser was so anxious but it couldn't save its baby. I believe it wished it had a pair of dexterous and powerful hands so that it could save the merganser cub. So the mother merganser thought of asking for help from humans. Although it knew that humans were very dangerous, they would always end up hunting its own compatriots with shotguns, the current situation was that only humans could help itself and its baby. The mother merganser eventually took the risk of finding a man nearby to help itself. And at first the man was puzzled, he didn't understand how a merganser could suddenly appear in front of him. The mother told the man to follow it with its body language. Although the man still didn't know the reason. The mother merganser's anxious look and his intuition told him that something must have happened, so he immediately followed the mother merganser to the fence where the merganser cub was trapped, the man at first did not see the location of the merganser cub. Only to hear the merganser cub's panic screams, he was still in the mother merganser's guidance to find the merganser cub was stuck in the corner of the fence. The man realized the seriousness of the problem as soon as he saw the merganser cub. And if he didn't get the merganser cub out, it was likely to suffocate and die. Because the merganser cub was stuck tightly in the gap between the fence and the house, it could not move, and its head and neck were almost bent to 90 degrees. The man rushed to open the fence. Probed down to fish the merganser cub, he soon rescued the merganser cub in danger, the merganser cub crumpled into a ball in the man's palm, shivering with fear as if it had not yet recovered from its near-death moment. The man hurriedly handed the frightened merganser cub to its mother, who was so excited that it kept sticking out its tongue to lick the merganser cub's cheeks and gently comforted it, as if to say, don't be afraid, mommy is here. The merganser cub also gradually calmed down under the comfort of its mother. This scene is so heartwarming, when the mother merganser was preparing to take its baby away, it looked back at the man from time to time, and its head nodded down from time to time as if it was bowing to the man. It used this way to express its gratitude, I have to say that this mother merganser is very spiritual and polite, with the rapid development of human society, the survival environment of many animals is getting worse and worse. Not only do they have to accept the laws of nature's survival, but also they have to face a reduction in living space. They sometimes have to risk coming to the territory of human activities, and if they encounter human hunting, it would be more difficult for them to survive. Animals' lives are also worthy of reverence. 
They are also flesh and blood beings with feelings. We should start from ourselves to protect the surrounding ecological environment, so that we can also protect the wild animals. To protect the animals is actually to protect ourselves. Hungry Bear Two days later, it crashed into his house. At that time, 68-year-old Fernando lived in a small mountain village deep in the mountains. The village was not large, and most people led a simple agricultural life. Fernando was no exception. He lived a normal, simple, and quiet life every day. However, what he did not expect was that his life would change drastically after encountering a wounded bear a few years ago. At that time, Fernando used to go to work before dawn. He didn't like to talk, so the villagers thought he had a good personality. His only hobby was smoking, and wherever he went, he always carried his tobacco pouch. One summer, Fernando woke up early as usual. After a casual breakfast, he grabbed his axe and went to the mountain to cut firewood while it was still cool. As he passed through a dense forest, he suddenly heard the roar of animals emerging from the trees. He was startled and quickly retreated a few steps. His tobacco pouch accidentally flew a few meters away. Although his ancestors lived in the deep mountains and saw many wild animals, they only watched them from a distance and left. They had never been so close to a beast, and it was terrifying to hear its roar. At that moment, he didn't know what to do, so he didn't dare to move or even breathe, fearing that the fierce beast that emerged from the bushes would harm him. He stared at the growling bushes for a long time, but no animal came out. Driven by curiosity, he dared to slowly walk towards the growling bushes to see what it was. However, since the trees and vines were too thick, he couldn't see anything clearly. So, he had to cut a wooden stick with an axe to separate the bushes and get a clearer view. Just after inserting the stick between the bushes, he suddenly heard another roar. Fernando was so scared that he quickly withdrew his hands and stumbled to the ground. He quickly got up and ran towards a large tree. When he regained his composure, he didn't want to stay there. He wanted to hurry up and cut wood, but he had barely taken a few steps when another roar came from the trees, which made him very frightened. If he didn't notice, he wouldn't feel like cutting trees anymore. He had tried the stick a moment ago, but nothing happened except for the roar. So, he boldly approached the growling bushes and used the stick to probe and see clearly. Although there were a few roars during that period, he didn't mind. He desperately wanted to see what kind of animal it was. So, he pushed aside the thick bushes, and finally, he saw it clearly. At that moment, a bear lay motionless on the ground, and it seemed that the roar had come from it. The bear was covered in blood and appeared to be badly injured. Fernando was near it at that moment, but it didn't respond. Fernando was nervous, afraid that the bear would get up and attack him. He didn't know what to do. For safety, he sat directly to the side and started smoking, wanting to observe the bear's condition first. After smoking a cigarette, he felt much more energized. Then he discovered that the bear was huge, weighing over 400 pounds. It had wounds on its legs and back, possibly from a predator. The wounds were deep and bleeding heavily, with the most severe one on the legs where several patches of skin had been torn off. The bear remained motionless, staring at Fernando the whole time, as if fueled by hope to survive. Immediately, Fernando also felt pity, but it was impossible to bring such a large animal home to treat it. He thought about it. Usually, when he was injured, he would bring some herbs from the mountains and treat the wound. He thought that if he treated the bear with herbs, it might work. So, he acted immediately. He stood up, gathered a bunch of wound healing herbs, and crushed them with stones to treat the bear. However, he didn't dare to get too close to the bear. If he angered it, he would be in trouble. Desperate, he cut some vines, slowly tied all the bear's limbs, and finally sealed its mouth. Strangely enough, the bear didn't move while he was tying it. It seemed to know that Fernando was going to save it. Once everything was done, he applied the herbs he had gathered to the wound to stop the bleeding and reduce inflammation. 
After applying the herbs, he feared that other beasts might attack the bear again. So, he loosened the vines that bound it, took off his coat to cover the bear, thinking that maybe other beasts would stay away from it after smelling the human scent, making the bear safer. Fernando couldn't guarantee that the bear would survive, but he felt that he had done everything he could. So, he was in a good mood afterward, picked up his axe, and continued going to the mountain to cut firewood. Time passed quickly, and when he finished cutting firewood, he remembered the bear. On his way home, he decided to take a look. At that moment, the wounded bear was much better. After seeing it, he didn't feel disgusted but called it Fernando. He thought that maybe the bear was hungry but didn't have the strength to get up and find something to eat. So, he turned around, cut some grass from the fridge, and put it near the bear's mouth. The bear took a good bite and left confidently. When he crossed the jungle the next day to see the bear again, he was greatly disappointed. The bear had disappeared, and the only thing left on the ground was the clothes he had covered the bear with and the food it had eaten. After seeing this, Fernando felt a little disappointed. He didn't know if the bear had left on its own or if something had gone wrong. He had to go to work, so he quickly forgot about that incident. However, three months later, a dramatic scene unfolded. By that time, autumn had arrived, and the weather had turned cold. Fernando worked all day and went to bed after dinner. His deep sleep was interrupted by his wife, who told him she heard noises on the other side of the door and that the village dogs were barking loudly. She wanted him to go out and see what was happening. Fernando rubbed his eyes, held his breath, and listened for a while. He heard someone exiting through the door. So he got up, dressed, and approached stealthily. He saw a bear walking through the crack in the door with the help of the moonlight. At times, the bear would lower its head to sniff the ground, and other times it would look up and around. At first, Fernando was surprised, but upon closer observation, the bear seemed familiar. It appeared that the bear had also seen Fernando hiding behind the door, had taken a few steps towards him, and had looked at him. Finally, Fernando remembered the bear he had rescued in the jungle three months ago. He slowly opened the door and went out. When the bear saw Fernando, it made a low noise and walked towards him. Fernando was nervous at that moment and didn't know what the bear would do. So he just stood still at the door. However, the bear showed no intention of attacking him, so he stopped being afraid. Just as the bear was about to approach Fernando, his wife called from the door. Seeing such a scene, she thought the bear was going to attack Fernando. Her scream suddenly sounded, causing Fernando, who was standing at the door, to startle. When he regained his composure, the bear had disappeared. When he told his wife what had happened, she didn't know what had happened. From then on, the bear often came to Fernando's door in the middle of the night, and Fernando got used to it and became familiar with it, even petting its head. Sometimes, the bear would gently touch his pants with its mouth. When it was with Fernando, it was docile and behaved well, like a domesticated bear. Fernando didn't know why the bear came to him late at night. He thought it might be hungry, so he often generously fed it with the concentrate that the sows ate. A few months later, something very happy happened to Fernando and his wife. After a cold winter, it was snowing heavily. Fernando's sow had a big belly as if she was about to give birth. Fernando and his wife were nervous, so they stayed by the stove all the time, afraid that the piglets would freeze. When the piglets were born late at night, the sow gave birth to twelve piglets in total. It was strange that the piglets didn't look like bears but rather like female piglets, which confused and unsettled the couple. However, the piglets were so adorable with their cute looks that they hurriedly lit the fire to keep them warm. They worked for a while and then went to bed. They didn't take long to get up to take care of the piglets, fearing they would starve or freeze. They were busy until night when the bear came back to Fernando's house. He realized that the bear was actually a wild female bear, so her so could give birth to female piglets after careful feeding by Fernando and his wife. The twelve bears grew up healthy and much faster than domesticated bears. 
The neighbors heard about this strange event and came to see what had happened. The story spread quickly, and some entrepreneurs from outside the city pre-ordered these bear cubs. They charged much more than for domesticated bears, to the delight of Fernando and his wife. Everyone said that the bear had been saved because Fernando was kind, and the bear that often came to Fernando's house after being injured was here to repay his kindness. When Fernando heard this, he said nothing. He sat quietly and smoked a cigarette. When someone is truly a good person with good intentions, a dog quickly becomes attached to them. The dog can stay close to the kind person or follow them everywhere. Using their great ability to read humans, dogs perceive good people when they see them. They can't keep a diary, of course, and they may not be able to express their gratitude aloud. However, they feel gratitude and express it. I have to say that they do, although my own research is not documented, it has been widely observed for many years in my own pets as well as in shelter animals and zoo animals that form strong bonds with their caregivers. Since attachment is a form of love, animals are capable of loving their caretakers. It is known that dogs love their owners so much that they mourn their death for many years. Empathy in animals span species and continents. Animals show empathy towards humans and other animals in many ways, such as comforting, grieving, and even rescuing each other at their own expense. This man came across a bear in need while hunting in the forest. He never imagined what his actions would bring him a year later. In a small village in Wyoming, there is a small family. The family consisted of a couple and their child John. John's father was a famous doctor in the town. He is proficient in herbal remedies. Many people come to this famous country doctor because of his excellent medical skills. After people come here for treatment, their bodies are slowly getting better. Little boy John adores his father very much. He wants to be like him. When he grows up, he always learns from his father what he can learn. When John was 17, his father got a strange disease. He did his best to help his father bring all their experience and knowledge together. Unfortunately, his father's condition deteriorated repeatedly. John's father dies after two sad weeks. John was very angry and very sad. So he gave up his dream of becoming a doctor. Because he thinks there's no point in being a doctor. He still can't even save his own father. He thought painfully, completely lost confidence in his ability. After the death of his father, John found that walking in the forest had a therapeutic effect on him. On a winter day, John finds himself particularly irritable. At this time he will go hunting in the forest, or just enjoy nature. He did it this time too. At the entrance of the forest, John soon realized that going out today was the absolute worst decision ever. Because there was a roar not far from where he was standing. He looked up and it was a huge bear. At first glance, the bear appears to be threatening him. But John sensed something was wrong with the bear. Its breathing is hard and it makes a very pitiful sound. John also noticed a fresh gash above the bear's left eye. When he realized what happened. He even forgot to breathe. This bear is pregnant and giving birth. Judging from that wound, it may have been attacked by another animal. It hurts now. John is not sure if the bear saw him. He's going to back away slowly before the bear notices him. But it's too late. He looked at the bear and the bear was growling loudly. But through those dark eyes John could see. There is a soul behind that communicating with him. It is trying to ask for help. It's a stupid thing, but John decided not to leave the bear. He's helped animals give birth before, so it's not new to him. So he ignored the danger and walked towards the bear. The next 20 minutes were some of the most exciting and unreal of John's life. After discovering the bear's unusual condition, he started trying to figure out how to help the bear. That's why the bear asked him for help. He also collected some herbs to help it heal its injured eyes. Even though the encounter looked a little scary. The bear is very calm. It looked at John with grateful eyes. 
At first John was very worried that the bear would attack him. But the bear took his cubs and left slowly. John knows he and the bear will never see each other again. No one would believe that he would have such an experience. But when he went back at night, he felt inexplicably happy. He saved the bear and it awakened a dead part of him. He remembered that he used to love helping others. This experience made him realize what a big mistake he had given up before John ran home quickly and told his mother about the experience. He said he would continue to help others. His mother didn't know what he was talking about. His voice sounds crazy. But she is very grateful to this mysterious bear. Because it brought the light back to his son's eyes. But she didn't know that she would be more grateful to the bear in the future. Over the next few days, John returned to the place where he encountered the bear in the first place. As expected, he didn't see the bear. But he wants the bear and the cubs to be safe from being attacked by other animals. John knew he would never see them again. But he will always cherish this memory. Because they gave him a chance to rediscover himself. John's life goes on. The first thing he did next was to open a small clinic in the village. Everyone is happy to see John back in his field. Many people came to visit and brought gifts to his clinic. Everything started to go well. John soon married his childhood sweetheart. John is always busy now. But he still finds time to relax in the forest and enjoy the embrace of nature. There is news that this year's winter may come later, and there will be snowstorms. John won't be able to go into the forest by then. So before winter came, he decided to go to the forest one last time. Here's nothing to do. As the weather gets colder. Most of the surrounding animals have gone into hiding. John can walk freely in the forest. John started to be in a daze while walking. He tripped and fell into a ditch several feet deep. It was so dark that he didn't see the rock that tripped him. He tried to stand up, but a sharp pain came from his leg. He cried out. His ankle was badly sprained at this point and he started calling for help. But the truth is, he's too far away from the others. He knew the sound would attract nearby predators. But he has no choice. After about an hour, his voice became hoarse. John started to give up. He is in pain and cold. Although he was dressed warmly when he went out. His jacket and boots did not protect him from the cold and wet ground. John starts to lose consciousness. He was awakened when he heard a loud bang nearby. He heard another bang. This sound is getting closer. John started to panic. In this state. He thought of his new wife Brenda and his mother. He promised them when he went out that he would be back in a few hours. If they find him dead. How sad they must be. John soon realizes that something huge is approaching. He was terrified. When he looked up to the ditch. He saw a menacing black bear staring at him. Just when the bear was about to jump into the ditch. A huge figure flew over, pushing the shadow out of sight. John heard a lot of growling and fighting. After a few minutes, the forest fell silent. John's heart was still pounding when he saw the brown bear appear. He saw a bear with a gash in its eye. John immediately recognized it as the bear he had helped months earlier. The mother bear jumped into the ditch, followed by her two cubs. This is the cub he helped earlier. The bear starts sniffing him and then starts licking his face. John sat on the ground scared. He wonders if the bear remembers him. Is the bear trying to eat him? Before he could react, the bear grabbed his collar with its teeth and pulled him out of the ditch. The bear put it a few feet away from the black bear. John held the bear tightly. He also saw clearly that it was indeed a black bear. The brown bear helped John. He struggled trying to get up. The bear approached him and let him lean on it. They and the two cubs walked out of the forest slowly. When he reached the edge of the forest, John thought they would return to the forest. But unexpectedly, the bear sent him home. His mother and wife were waiting anxiously at the door. 
At first they were frightened by bears. Until John explained to them what happened. John's mother soon understood that her son was not hallucinating. As they watched the three bears go back into the forest. They all know it's a story that will be passed down from generation to generation. There has always been an amicable relationship between elephants and humans, so why would it do this? Some passers-by who know more about animal habits realize that it really seems to ask for help, so they follow it. They go to a well, which reveals that the elephant's baby has fallen into a deep pit. This is a well used to water the ground, more than two meters in diameter. Just enough to carry the elephant. The good thing is that the water inside is not much, not yet submerged its whole body. At this time, the baby elephant can still probe the trunk out of the water to breathe, however, in the process of falling, its head and tail were bruised. The skin above all rubbed off, looks very heartbreaking, the little guy hears its mother coming and seems to have brought helpers, so it keeps hissing for help, and the miserable voice seems to say, Mom, help me. But this well is six meters deep. And the weight of the little one is close to two tons, so it is not so easy to pull it out. The kind-hearted people are also very anxious. At this time, many villagers gather around, and some of them propose, why not ask professionals for help? So the villagers contact an animal rescue organization, and the rescue team that received the information quickly arrives. It seems that this kind of rescue happens often in this area. They get an excavator straight away to clear the roadblock and drive to the well and dig straight in. I have to say that this is indeed a good way. The excavator can dig a long channel along the side of the well, as long as the channel is dug deep enough. The little guy can climb out along the channel itself. During the idle period a kind person brings the sow from home and pours it directly on the wound of the little guy from above. Feeling a hint of relief, the baby elephant uses its trunk to apply the salve evenly. And then looks deeply at the kind man, as if to thank him. At this time the excavator has dug out a channel, the next step is to push down the brick wall. The little guy doesn't want to stay down there for a moment, and when it sees the excavator's shovel. It thinks it is going to save him to go out and keeps testing with its nose. At this point the driver stops working in order not to hurt it, and then starts pushing the wall when the little guy is not so excited, inevitably, some broken bricks will fall during construction. The smart little guy in the well below also constantly adjusts, tries to avoid secondary damage. Soon the dugout channel is more and more close to the small elephant, the operator of the excavator worries about the small elephant cannot climb out. He has been expanding the hole. At this time, the small elephant is also very smart, seeing the hole has been so close, there is hope of escape, it uses the trunk to explore the borrowed force to climb up. But during this process, due to accidentally get off some bricks, and smashes to itself, the elephant mother anxiously hisses on the side, and then the kind man above gives the little guy some medicine, like cheering it up. The little guy makes all the strength, but it still can't climb up. It's clear that the hole is still not low enough. At this time the excavator operator continues to dig down, the anxious little guy almost hurt itself by mistake. The experienced excavator operate widens the hole while the baby elephant's back is turned to him, and now the height has been level with the little guy. This time the little elephant easily climbs out, follows by the dug tunnel, does not turn back and does to its mother. The elephant mother hurriedly touches the baby elephant gently with its trunk to give it comfort. The rescuers bring a toolbox to help the baby elephant get a good bandage in order to prevent the injury from getting inflamed after returning to nature perhaps realizing that its child is no longer in danger, the mother elephant does not watch the bandaging process aside. 
but goes to the people's side with its trunk and interacts with everyone, like saying thank you. When it's the time to leave, the two elephants with their trunks to the crowd and rescue workers waving, has been reluctant to leave, repeatedly express their gratitude. In this story we are deeply infected by the maternal love of the mother elephant, it turns out that, maternal love, is not unique to humans, many animals also have it, that is one of the world's most selfless and moving love. And they often don't take for granted the help they receive in the face of humans. In their world, gratitude is also a mandatory course. The following story of a little monkey has also touched many people. A newborn baby monkey is accidentally trapped in a net and can't break free, while its mother is shouting anxiously. In such urgent moments, will it be able to escape? Let's go on. As the closest animals to humans, monkeys have a very high social nature. So it is common to see some monkeys running to human dwellings. And this little monkey in the picture is accidentally trapped by a net pulled up by humans, these nets are actually to block the animals from destroying the crops. However, this little monkey is inexperienced and is trapped at once. We can see that its body wrapped in a net. Several young men passing by hear the cries and immediately rescue it that I in a big tree not far from the little monkey, the monkey's mother is watching its child anxiously. But there is nothing it can do about this kind of trap set by humans. A young man takes out a sickle, the little monkey is immediately frightened and begins to flip violently. Perhaps it thinks the humans are trying to hurt it, and it keeps trying to resist. But its own hands are fixed by the two young men. The family of monkeys in the tree watch the humans intently, with their hearts in their throats. Perhaps they want to gamble that if they are trying to hurt the monkey, the monkeys would attack them at once. However, 10 minutes passed, the monkey family do not feel the hostility, but see that the two humans seem to be saving the little monkey. But because the delay is a bit long, and the little monkey constantly break free. Resulting in these nets have been dead stuck in the little monkey's body. The young man is extremely careful, he's afraid of hurting the little monkey accidentally. I in the process of rescue, the little monkey is still in a state of panic, constantly screaming. Which makes the young man has to speed up in his hands. After all, if the animal is in a state of shock for a long time, it is also very unfriendly to its health condition. In a short while, the net around the neck of the little monkey is removed. And it immediately tries to escape, but is grabbed back by the young man, because its feet are still trapped in the net. The little monkey cannot understand this and thinks that the young man does not want to let itself go. It is scared and doesn't know what to do. At this time the monkey's mother has jumped down from the tree and is waiting anxiously for its child under the tree. After checking out the little monkey with no trauma, the young man releases it, and its mother has been waiting for a long time. Holding the little monkey and running to the tree, and gives the young man a deep look when it is leaving, as if to express its gratitude, years later, perhaps the young man has forgotten his actions today, but for the little monkey perhaps that is a lifetime of kindness. So when the little monkey and its mother appear in the yard again, the young man is very surprised. Not only do they come, but they also bring a lot of fruits to him. The man is so pleased to see the little monkey thriving that he takes out food and treat them well. From then on, there seemed to be a friendship across races in this world. In human society, the ability to remember kindness may not be as long as animals, and there is no shortage of people who bite the hand that feeds one. Although the animal's gratitude does not bring any practical benefits, but the heart is the most precious. When animals are in danger, I hope that we can all do our best to lend a helping hand.